everyone, I'm Allison Smith. We are so happy to have you here with us from the Energy Cast Studios in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Let's take a look at March's top stories. Energy Secretary Chris Wright made his first visit to Oak Ridge. He shared his insights on the future of energy in our community. Hear why he thinks our area could be the charge in a nuclear renaissance. And experience history like never before. The K-25 Interpretive Center will give visitors a new perspective of the Manhattan Project site that changed the world. A recent key exchange marks a major milestone, bringing us closer to the center's grand opening. I feel like I'm finding a place here at ORNL where I'm able to use my voice in a space that's very useful. Meet the Oak Ridge National Lab employee with one very powerful voice. He's a manufacturing specialist and a master of the microphone. More on how his talent is helping science sound even better. All right, some big news in Oak Ridge. Energy Secretary Chris Wright made his first trip to Oak Ridge in recent weeks. During his visit, he saw firsthand how cleanup is transforming Y-12 and providing land to the community that's attracting next generation nuclear companies. Wright toured the Y-12 National Security Complex, where OEM and its contractor UCOR are removing old contaminated facilities to eliminate hazards and make room for new infrastructure that supports national security missions. OREM has already cleared the former biology complex and is now demolishing Alpha 2 while preparing other facilities for teardown. As a fan of history, this is a critical area for Manhattan Project. This is a critical area for winning World War II um, and it's going to be a critical area for our future. So seeing the people, seeing the buildings, seeing the infrastructure, and hearing the bold plans, I'm energized. Wright also met with congressional and business leaders at the East Tennessee Technology Park, where land that OREM cleaned and transferred is now fueling new economic growth. OREM has transferred 1,800 acres, attracting companies and a projected $7 billion in investments. Our goal is to unleash American energy and therefore unleash American innovation. And one of the key pillars of that is next generation nuclear. Being leaders in nuclear technology and nuclear industry led us to win the war, led us to win the Cold War, but it hasn't moved very much for the last few decades. We want to get nuclear launched again. And I see that energy, that activity, that land, that willingness to do it right here. I think the nuclear renaissance could begin right here. Oak Ridge made history as the first site to remove a former enrichment complex and the first DOE site to pursue reindustrialization. Today, the East Tennessee Technology Park is a privately owned industrial park and a growing hub for nuclear energy companies. And even CBS News took notice. The network interviewed Kairos Powers, CEO at the K-25 History Center. A Sunday morning correspondent, David Pogue, reported on the test reactor Kairos Power is building at the East Tennessee Technology Park and covered the company's innovative nuclear technology and partnership with Google to power data centers. You can watch the full story on cbsnews.com. A major milestone in preserving Oak Ridge history. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers handed over the key to the new K-25 Interpretive Center, the final piece in a decade-long effort by OREM to preserve the site's legacy. Here's a preview of the view that shaped history and what visitors can expect to see. Construction is complete on the K-25 Interpretive Center. This month, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers symbolically handed over the key to the facility to DOE's Oak Ridge Office of Environmental Management. Leaders gathered at the East Tennessee Technology Park to celebrate the successful partnership and tour the facility, overlooking the 44-acre footprint of the former K-25 building. Being able to be involved in a historical viewing complex that allows people to celebrate the historical nature of that bring our current generation back to be able to understand what the Corps was involved with and the missions that made our country great uh, will be really something special. The K-25 building played a pivotal role in the Manhattan Project, 
producing uranium for the first nuclear weapons and helping end World War II. The new interpretive center, set to open this fall, will feature exhibits linking this history to Oak Ridge's modern reindustrialization and environmental cleanup efforts. It's going to leave a stamp for EM's work at this site um, that's going to be that's going to complement our work that we've been embarked in for decades on reindustrialization, and it's going to tie the story of the Manhattan Project to the story that's unfolding around us right now with reindustrialization. So it's 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 a real I think it's a real good uh, legacy for the program. The center is one of the final components of a multi-project agreement signed in 2012 which also included the K-25 History Center and the preservation of the historic Alexander Inn. It's a lasting testament to the partnership between OREM and the Army Corps. It has been a, uh, we just think, an unmitigated success. So we certainly appreciate uh, the partnership with the Corps and that you know we have our expertise on environmental cleanup. They have their expertise on new build and we've got to see that displayed out here. And so I just think it's a model uh, for moving forward that you can rely on each other's core competencies to do what you're good at. Leaders are excited for the visitors the center will attract, sharing Oak Ridge's impact on history with a wider audience. We've always been very secretive until about the last 10 years about telling what went on here. And there's good reason for that, uh, but I do think it, it's good uh, that we start telling that story start driving some traffic out here so that so that the general public could understand what was done in Oak Ridge and what a key part they played in national defense. It's a powerful reminder of the past and a promising sign of Oak Ridge's future. All right, exciting progress at Oak Ridge National Laboratory. A teams have finished a full scan of all 21 hot cells at building 3517. It's a critical step in planning the facility's cleanup and future demolition. For over a year, teams have been working to prepare the former fission production development lab for deactivation. The latest phase involved drilling access points into the building's contaminated hot cells. Workers used remote cameras and specialized tools to survey each cell, capturing images and radiation data. Some cells were empty, while others contained highly radioactive equipment. This work provides a detailed understanding of the contents and contamination, helping teams plan a safe and efficient cleanup strategy. From this characterization data, we're producing a characterization report which will document what we found. And so from that, we build into an approach. We will have some, a workshop and determine our path forward. And then we will build the engineering and the uh, documented safety analysis where we'll take a look at um, what our scope of work is and we'll build our authorization basis uh, so that we can continue cleanup. Removing all contaminated material is key to deactivating and eventually demolishing building 3517. A crews are making significant progress on a high priority project at ORNL. They're working to demolish the last remaining hot cell structure from the former radioisotope development laboratory, a top EM priority for 2025. This complex work is taking place within a six story protective enclosure in the heart of ORNL's campus. The heavily shielded concrete structure is the final component of the former lab. Only A and B cells remain. Currently, crews are focused on deactivating B cell, removing waste, decontaminating surfaces, and sealing cell penetrations. The team is also preparing demolition equipment to ensure a safe teardown. There's some drains we got to remove, um, decon the stainless steel liner that's in the cell, and then plug all the penetrations of the cell from the, to the outside and also to the other cell. Um, in the meantime, we are also doing in parallels prepping the demo equipment that's existing in there to ensure that it's ready to demo. And we, we plan on demoing B-cell late spring, early summer. Once B-cell demolition is complete, crews will shift to deactivating cell A. Demolition of cell A is slated for late summer or early fall. And you may remember our previous coverage about the efforts to remove a highly radioactive wire from that hot cell. We've got that and a lot more on our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe to our channel for more exclusive stories. 
A big news from Governor Bill Lee. He's pushing for a multi-million dollar boost to Tennessee's nuclear industry. He's proposing $50 million to help the Tennessee Valley Authority build a small modular reactor near Oak Ridge. Plus, $10 million for nuclear workforce education, as recommended by the state's Nuclear Energy Advisory Council. And another $10 million for the Nuclear Energy Fund. That fund was created in 2023 to attract nuclear technology companies to the state. And interest is growing. The Tennessee Department of Economic and Community Development says it's received 30 project applications, totaling over $80 million in grant requests. People all often say, oh, you're, you're James Earl Jones. And I'm like, no, <laughs> thank you, but no, not quite that. He's got a knack for bringing words to life. Meet Wellington Harris, a manufacturing specialist at Oak Ridge National Laboratory, who also has a passion for voiceover work. This month's Spotlight takes a closer look how his two worlds collided, giving Ower and Ella voice like never before. When Wellington Harris speaks, People listen. I'm Wellington Harris, manufacturing specialist here at ORNL. You may not know my face, but you may have heard my voice. And now we are using AI. From lab equipment to lines in a script, he's a man who knows how to deliver. Harris has always had a voice made for the mic. From church productions to announcing softball games and small projects on the side. Over the years, I've done a number of different things, whether it was being the voice of God in a church play, which I've done that like seven times. But at ORNL, his voice wasn't just heard, it was elevated. In 2023, the lab communications team needed a powerful narration for their annual award ceremony. They didn't have to look too far. We all need a reason, a reason to wake up a reason to fill our day. That's when Harris went from behind the scenes to center stage. With his fiance by his side, he watched his voice fill the room during the premiere of A Day in the Life of Science. Every today gets us closer tomorrow. When the lights went down and the lab director introduced the video, I didn't know exactly how to feel. I felt like a little kid. I was tearing up, heart was beating crazy, and then I just was watching everyone else's reaction to what they were hearing, what they were saying. By day, I helped shape the future of manufacturing. And with great voiceover work comes great nicknames. The director of communications, David Keim, introduced me to his wife as the voice of ORNL, which was just too much, but I, I really enjoyed hearing that. The producer, Butch, his nickname for me became the uh, Velvet Blanket. He says because he could just wrap himself up in my voice, so I, I appreciate that as well. But this story is about more than a great voice. It's about the power of passion and the value of bringing more than one talent to the workplace. When you're in an environment where you're able to do what people would call your regular job, um, a lot of people have the passion for what they're already doing. But all too often, I think we come across situations where many of us have outside passions. To be able to meld that and blend that with what I'm doing here is amazing. He's found his purpose, his passion, and his profession right here in Oak Ridge. And with a voice like his, who knows where it will take him next? A big stories are coming your way next month. We'll dive into the Oak Ridge Corridor, a coalition working to boost and expand business growth in East Tennessee. Hear from the group's president on what this could mean for our region. We'll have that and much more. And remember, if you work in environmental management in Oak Ridge, keep us in mind if you come across a story. We're always looking for news tips and story ideas from across the reservation. We'd love to feature what matters to you right here. Email your idea to oakridgeem at oerem.doe.gov. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts. We post the show on our YouTube channel. 
Plus, if you liked a topic we covered here, we often have more on it over there. You can also follow EM News on our Facebook, Instagram, and X accounts. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And new episodes come out the last Wednesday of the month. You can watch on air or online, same places as always. We'll see you next month from the EnergyCast studio in Oak Ridge.